Hey everybody, welcome to my page. This is Danielle. Daniel, I am a LCSW and Doctor of Psychology candidate, actually graduating with my doctorate in about a month, just right after the holidays. I'll be done. So very, very excited. And if, as you're joining, please say hello and tell me where you're joining from. We're going to have an amazing discussion on the protocol adaptive. So this is something to manage stress and anxious emotions very naturally and we're going to talk all about the ingredients in here and what it can do for you or your therapy practice so for those of you who are new to my page this is the brain talks i like to do these i used to do them very regularly but now that i'm finishing my doctorate up i just do it as when i can and i love connecting with all of you so please say hello i also have my website in the link inside of the post and that is somewhere that you can go for more information i'll have some new courses coming out soon but i do have all of my brain content out there that shows you like this <laughs> all the different research that has been done and seen um, that affect different parts of the brain in a good positive way and then I actually just finished doing my research study on PTSD and aromatherapy so I'll be sharing that at the beginning of the new year sometime so really really cool just put all the results together and it was good that's all I'm gonna say so hello thank you yes PhD candidate thanks Jennifer I'm so excited to almost be done it makes me want to cry I'm so close to being done Finally, so yay. So anyway, I took some time, you guys, to really dive into adaptive. There were, I already knew the oils, but the other ingredients were new to me, so I wanted to see, learn a little bit more. I know some questions came up, so that was perfect, kind of helped me in my research. And then I also um, wanted to, you know, dive into some of the research and learn some of the stories so I could, you know, be prepared to share with you guys. And as some of you know, I presented at doTERRA's convention on the stress and anxious cycle in our brain. So one of the things I want to talk to you about, you know, before we go into this, and I kind of referenced this already, but we have emotional processes in the brain and we have, you know, different stress, um, like the HPA axis, for example, is, kind of, is, is your core piece um, of cycle in the brain that inhibits different neurotransmitters, tells the body to like deregulate certain um, functions as well so that it can put you on an alert and a stress mode. So the HPA axis, um, part of it in the brain, obviously other part of it's on top of the adrenal glands, um, with, um, which is the A in the adrenals. So what happens is it, it releases a whole bunch of cortisol, epi epinephrine and what it does it tells the body to be on alert so what we have finding in our day and age with like just um, gosh system overload sensory overload our bodies are on this stress cycle a lot more than normal and it doesn't get much of a rest in fact I don't know if you're anything like me but I when I when I used to have a moment to rest I would think oh my gosh I'm wasting my time I'm doing, I'm not doing something. And, and it, that's not true. Like being able to rest is so critical for that HPA access, let alone the entire brain. So I know, and I want you to guys, oh, sorry, I'm going to jump, jump in right here. If there's somebody on that can, that's maybe on a computer and you can be my scribe and maybe type in some of the keynotes that I say, that would be fabulous. And then also, um, if you want to share this now or tag people, this is a good time because we're going to dive in. And if you have any questions on adaptive, I will let you know when to type those in because um, I won't be reading all the comments right this second, um, but I will be able to go back as well later, but also at the end I'll be um, answering a few questions if I can. So, okay, so back on stress, right? Stress and anxiousness. So anxiousness really stems from stress as the core. So what I like about adaptive is it's really helping the body address stress at the core, which is calming that HPA access, right? And that's what you want in order to like tell everything else to calm down. It's kind of like, um, again, that crucial piece, instead of just treat symptom, 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 it's going at the core. And that's why um, I think this is a really good um, trio to implement. So first thing, oh, you know what? First I'm gonna talk about the essential oils. So the essential oils, um, Actually, before I even dive into those, I'm gonna look at my notes so I stay on target. Um, 
let's see, uh, we talked about it already, rises in cortisol and adrenaline affect long-term memory and affect long-term serotonin as well. And so that's why this adaptive, how it's formulated is so cool. Um, so it's formulated to relieve the stress cycle. And it was tested in a clinical trial with 79 participants. And they were given adaptive or placebo. And the results showed that it helped improve psychological but also physiological symptoms of stress. Participants who took adaptive reported feeling less stress and calmer than the placebo group. So that was really cool in that clinical trial they've done. And I know a lot of you have been having your own little trials with it, and it's been amazing. So um, the first thing is we are, we're going to address is the limbic system, okay? So this one right here, the oil, this is for a diffuser. So if you have a therapy office and clients coming in, this would be a good one to do, you know, five to six drops in a diffuser every four hours. And it's just going to be a really good way to balance out um, stress, anxiousness, and even mood. And that's what's really cool about it is that it's not just for one type of treatment. So this is going to be the one for the diffuser mostly. And then this one is going to be your touch oil, which is going to be something that you can do on pulse points on the neck. So pulse points on the, and pulse points on the wrist. So if you look at pulse points, right, it goes right into the bloodstream. And that bloodstream on the neck is going to affect the brain. Pulse points on the wrist are going to go and affect the heart. And so these are your two centers that really can help calm anxiousness. And if you've looked at any of my material, I have brain charts that show you where to use it. But I love it here and here. And the reason why I love to use the touch oils there, it's way effective to get into the brain. But also I can smell it. I can just put my wrist up and smell it like that. And so then it goes olfactory. So again, this is going to go straight into the bloodstream. Olfactory, when you inhale it with the essential oil in the diffuser or on your wrist, it's going to travel through neural olfactory pathways and stimulate the brain right into, I'm just going to pull this up, right into the limbic system, which is a group of structures that affect memory and they affect emotions, which is really cool, but they also communicate to the HPA axis, communicates right to that hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. Right, and then those communicate to the adrenal glands, which is on top of the kidneys. So that's why I really recommend you know doing the whole trio. So let's dive into the oils that are in the touch and the oil blend. Okay, so first of all, be ready to write if anybody's scribing. I'm going to give you lots of good content. Now, I want you to know what I share with you is from my research. I have been heavily steeped in research this past year, which is why I've been a little bit more dormant on like social media, but I've been looking up all these different, doing a literature review, which was like almost 100 pages long, getting close to publishing a book on all of this. But this is stuff that I have found from my um, finding research um, and reviewing research on pubmed.gov, of course, um, all through my, my um, journals that I have access to through my doctorate. Okay. So wild orange, so orange and any other citrus is right, but orange we know is high, very high in limonene, one of the highest, that and grapefruit. And so well, the key component of limonene is going to be uplifting mood, okay? They're going to be helping you with serotonin and norepinephrine, and it's going to also help lower cortisol, and that, again, if you're up increasing norepinephrine if it's needed for mood and then serotonin and then decreasing the cortisol from the stress because long-term effects of cortisol is messing your serotonin up okay so that's orange i'm just giving you little bits there's tons more research on it but that's just one um, that affects this lavender lavender we know is what calming thank you i just saw stephanie thank you so much for typing you are a gem so um, lavender calms the nervous system. So the nervous system is communication from the brain throughout the entire body, and it helps to calm anxiousness. And studies have seen it also improve mood via serotonin. So lavender is going to be one of those things that if your heart is pumping a little faster than normal because you're you know feeling a little anxiousness rise, put the lavender or the adaptive, I guess, um, now directly on your heart because that's where the core or the pumping is going, right? So that's a good one to, if you have the touch and your heart's pumping, just put it right there. Copaiba is inside of the blend, 
and copaiba helps to it binds to cannabinoid receptors in the brain and the cannabinoid receptors are what help cannabinoid receptor 2 I should say help to reduce anxiousness and stress isn't that cool i mean that's one of the major reasons why people are you know very into i would say um, marijuana was for the calming of anxiousness but copaiba does that without the psychotropic effects so i think that's really cool so copaiba is in there so again we've talked about um, two two different oils that help with serotonin and now we're talking about one that helps with stress and anxiousness so spearmint so menthol there are studies done on menthol and that shows that it helps improve depressive mood via serotonin again so you can see how cool this is helping to restore that serotonin um, production in the brain. Magnolia, the primary constituent, is linalool, known for grounding anxious feelings and calming the body both emotionally and physically. So again, remember in anxiousness and stress, your body is a little bit more on high alert. So these things like lavender and um, magnolia are going to be actually calming that motor activity inside the body. I think that's really cool. Rosemary. So we know rosemary is really good for memory. It helps um, the memory cells. It boosts the immune system. It also regulates inflammation. is good for mood. So rosemary is such a critical piece in here. Um, it has been shown in so many studies to help again memory cells. When you have stress, what happens on your brain? Can you think clearly? No, right? You're you're just like ah, oh, it's because you're not making those neural connections. And so this is the piece that's going to connect the memory, so you can have less brain fog and think clearly to um, manage and cope. So that's what I love about this. Let me back up a second here. The essential oils don't really take away your anxiousness or your, your stress and all that kind of stuff. What it does is it helps to calm the physiological and psychological response so that you can make a choice and be able to see th things clearly, see through what's going on and go, you know what, it's all gonna be okay. I don't have to take this on. And so it allows you to be in that um, in a space, in a mental space, to just calm yourself down and think clearly. And that's what's important because once you can think clearly, you can make choices about the stress and anxiousness and all those things that are going on in your life. So neroli, next um, ingredient in the oil blends is neroli. And neroli has been shown to reduce anxiousness, boost mood. It's a motor relaxant. So again, I talked about relaxing um, hyperactivity in the body, motor activity, I would say. And it also helps support memory and learning. Really, really cool. So neroli is a, a gem in there. Oh, sorry, my cat just jumped onto my thing. Um, sweet gum. Now I had to look this one up. I had not heard of this one and I looked up um, research on it and it is um, an oil that helps calm involuntary neurological responses so which means again it's helping calm the motor system of the body and this it also has antioxidant back to, um, uh, properties and anti-inflammatory so it helps regulate inflammation helps calm the body. So can you see what an amazing blend the oil really is? Isn't that cool? So you have so much that helps with anxiousness, stress, and regulating serotonin, regulating um, memory cells, as well as inflammation. All these core causes that keep you in that cycle of stress. So again, like I said, I love that it's, it's not going to change how you um, see it see a situation but it's gonna help you to calm the brain down so you can make neural connections so you can change how you see a situation I hope that makes sense I just I feel like oils are so empowering because they help in making all these connections in your brain so that you get to choose how to feel or see a situation so all right let's go into the capsules I know this is one everybody's really waiting for because this is different we haven't had anything like this before. And I love that through doTERRA, we're really breaking ground into, into treatments for things that we deal with on a daily basis. And this is also going into clinical practices, into hospitals, and into research facilities, and into clinics. And so I love that they're really showing the validation through clinical studies to be able to help us in our medical care. So capsules are going to be a great way for this. So the first ingredient we have in the capsules is lavender. And we just talked about how it calms the nervous system. 
and supports serotonin in the brain. The next um, essential oil we have is coriander. Now, coriander, coriander comes from the seed of cilantro. And the seed, it helps to balance, I like this is really cool, helps to balance gut microflora, which affects focus, impulse control, and clarity of thinking. Isn't that neat? So coriander is going to be one that's going to help with that brain fog or just like if, you know, when anxiousness comes on, you're all over the place, you can't think very clearly, it's going to help you think. And then you can go, okay, I can deal with the finances. I can deal with the stress of my job. It's, I'm just going to do what I can do. And so it's going to help that your brain come back to center. Wild orange is in there, which again is that high in limonene. It's going to boost mood. It's also going to help lower cortisol and in, in, increase serotonin. Fennel seed oil is high in polyphenols, and it's um, which is also antioxidant, and it helps reduce biological effects of stress in the brain and body. So when we talk about stress, it's not just the brain, right? We know this. Our body has physiological reactions. In fact, when we are in stress mode, it shuts down. It shuts down our gastrointestinal tract. It shuts down our um, reproductive tracts. Everything kind of goes on a back burner so that your body just deals with stress. So imagine, that's great if you're in a fight or flight situation, but imagine when you're in fight or flight all the time and you don't need to be, these systems get so taxed out that they're not really functioning at their level. So, so something like fennel seed, which is also good for digestion, which is really cool, but it helps um, with those biological stresses um, that happens in the body um, from stress actually. So really cool. Okay, the next one is ahi flower seed oil. And this one I had to look up too. I was kind of excited about it though once I did. So ahi, like like tuna ahi, but it's not from tuna. <laughs> it's actually from a flower. And this seed um, produces is a super omega. So it helps the um, helps the brain with the omega fats that we need. Now we know the brain is like eighty percent fat, so it needs fats to survive. And fats like omegas can just go right through the blood brain barrier and really um, feed the brain into what it needs. And so this also helps ahi flower um, seed oil helps with um, supporting healthy inflammation in the brain. Okay. So again, this is inflammation is a core cause of everything. And so I love that this entire blend not only focuses on, hey, let's lift mood, let's balance inflammation, let's regulate it because it might be blocking what helps you produce your own serotonin. And also, on another side note, these oils aren't serotonin. They're not melatonin. They're not norepinephrine. They're not, they don't produce or don't, um, are not themselves the essential oil or the neurotransmitter. Therefore, it allow, it's helping your body create it. It's helping your body to respond in a way that it needs to with the serotonin that it needs. And here's what's cool. In studies, you see that um, if in people who, like for example, even in the clinical study they did on this, that who weren't, you know, if they weren't stressed, um, then it didn't show much of a difference. It just didn't, it just kind of had a balancing. They're very adaptogenic is what I'm trying to say. In my research study, just to give you a little, little preview, um, those who had a lower level of PTSD symptoms had just a lower level of um, effect from the oil. And I thought that was so consistent with the adaptogenic. They just didn't need as strong as a reduction in what was going on with them. So they're just like, yeah, it kind of it was very mild for them, which made sense because their their symptoms were mild. But those who had high symptoms noticed a very strong effect. So really cool. They're adaptogenic. Okay. Let's go on to the last two ingredients. I want to spend a little time on these. These are really cool. So GABA. So we have, I think it's in the form of gamma aminobutyric acid, which is GABA. So GABA is an amino acid. Okay, we call it a neurotransmitter. It's actually an amino acid in the brain. And what GABA does, it's our primary neurotransmitter inhibitor. And so what that does is it helps if there's cortisol, norepinephrine, all these excitatory neurotransmitters, GABA will bind to it. And that will help to um, cause a calming sensation in the brain and in the body. Okay, so that's what the GABA. Now let me talk about the source of GABA in here. So let me get to my slides so I can stay on path here. GABA, 
Um, the source, so as we talk about, this amino acid facilitates communication within the cells in the brain and plays an integral role in mood and modulating stress. So the GABA is from, the, okay, I'm going to read, here we go, is produced by fermentation of glutamic acid, alpha amino acid, using lactobacillus species. It's a microorganism. So lactobacillus, hope I'm saying that right, lactobacillus, it's a, it's a friendly type of bacteria, microflora, that lives in our digestive system. And it's also found in fermented foods like yogurt, like kefir, for example. And there is actually a lot of studies that show when you have something probiotic, like fermented foods, it increases um, frontal lobe activity. Frontal lobe is your ability to think and, and have impulse control and organize. And so GABA is found naturally in fermented lactobacillus. So it's from this natural form of um, basically a probiotic, so it's, um, which is a prebiotic, I guess, a lactobacillus. And just like, you know, we've got serotonin that you can, that helps your body with serotonin with dark, uh, dark chocolate and eggs are a good source of serotonin. There are other foods that contain and are good sources of GABA, which are like lentils, nuts, and citruses, spinach, for example. So this one in particular has come from the fermentation, uh, fermented foods from um, lactobacillus. Okay, hope that answers some questions there. Now let's talk about um, selectium. So selectium is another ingredient in there that I had to look up. I did not know this one. And it's an extract from a succulent plant called Zembrin, and it's native to South Africa, used traditionally um, to mentally prepare for stress. I thought that was kind of cool. And has been studied in various, various clinical trials um, its primary active constituent is an alkaloid known as known for its ability to support the effects of serotonin in the brain, has like an SSRI action, and calm the nervous system. So the alkaloid, selectium, right, uh, or selectium is an alkaloid that helps, and it's been shown, they've been doing actually psychology research on this for a while because of its SSRI capabilities, meaning helps with serotonin being prolonged in the brain so you can get the effects of it. So I thought that was kind of cool. So selectium's already been studied in the mental health world and is a great way to prolong the effects of serotonin in the brain. So let me talk about some uses. And now if you have some questions about um, the GABA, or I'm sorry, the GABA, anything to do with what we talked about today, um, you can now put them in here and I will be able to go back and look at your questions and answer a few while we're on here. But some uses. So Obviously, we've talked a lot about stress, anxiousness, and uplifting mood. GABA's going to, or GABA, I keep saying GABA. Um, adaptive is going to be great for that. Um, great for jet, jet lag, for sleep. And when you, when you compare it with copaiba, it's actually going to intensify. Copaiba is kind of a driver, meaning it's going to magnify the effects of other essential oils that you use. So it might magnify. So if you'd want to magnify the effects, you can try it. If not, then don't do it. Okay, let's see. Um, what else can you use it? I just want to see my notes here. Well, we had, I've got a couple um, cool testimonials. I already posted about a couple about um, one of moms who has, her child has a tick disorder and was able to calm his tick disorder quite a bit, which is really, really cool. My own mother actually had a great response using the adaptive and said it just calmed her and anxiety. I have another friend who shared that she's had, you know, she's in recovery from addiction and she has been able to take it um, adaptive and it's calmed like that nervous sensation inside of her body that she had constantly felt all, most of her life. So really cool. Another woman who had... Um, who has problems with um, OCD, who checking multiple things at, time, at night before sleeping, was able to use adaptive, and she said after a few days she was no longer checking everything and was able to sleep through the night. So that's really, really cool. So lots of ways you can use it. I would suggest, you know, in the evenings, um, using it in a diffuser, in the mornings if you need it, just depending on when you feel the most anxiousness is it if it's before work or before school day then use this keep this in your pocket and use the touch oil at all moments just really quick this is your immediate and then 
the capsules on here, it talks about taking them, let's see, what does it say? One capsule as needed. So I would just suggest, when is it that you're um, feeling the most stressed and anxious? That's when you would take it. So like I use, I use the oil pretty consistently, this one, um, the touch oil, but I use the capsules, as you can see, they're almost gone. Um, mostly when I'm feeling the most stressed, where my brain is all over the place, I use it for like speaking. So when I've gone on stage, before going on stage, um, about half an hour before, I'll take one of those. So that will really help. If I, any type of situ situation where I know I'm going to be like a little um, heightened, I will take the capsule. Um, I don't know if you need to take more than one every four hours, just FYI. I mean, you could do two but uh, at a time, but again, I would probably not take another one for six to eight hours if you do two. So just, just pay attention to your body. Everybody's body is different, and everybody needs different type of chemistry. So I would say for the majority of the people I've talked to, this has been such an amazing a benefit for their body chemistry, their brain chemistry. But there are some that I've talked to that it hasn't been, and that's okay. So what I would suggest is if it's not working well with your chemistry, but yet you still want the benefits of it, you could do one capsule at a time, like for a week. I'll give I'll give you a heads up. Like I Yarrow Palm internally wasn't good for my chemistry. I was having a hard time with the effects of it. Was it because it was maybe benefiting me in some way? Maybe but I didn't like the effects. And so I only take Yarrow Palm once a week and that's what I can manage and it's perfect. So just be gentle on your body. If you have any type of response, be gentle. I never advise someone to muscle through it. That's not my philosophy. My, that's not my theory how I go about things. Some people do and that's great. That's totally whatever works for you. But I think you be gentle. Your body just will tell you what it needs. But hear me talk about a couple things. Some people ask me the theory on the opposite effect. Like it has the opposite effect on me. It seems to increase my anxiousness, right? And Yarrow Palm did that to me. It, it's supposed to balance hormones. It did not. I. It was a little, made me feel like my hormones were out of whack. So that's okay. So I do it once a week and it's just perfect. It's really calm on my system. So if you have the opposite effect, then either don't, don't use it and try something else or use it only once a week and see if it can start regulating your body. Because I know for me, and I can only speak about Yara Palm because it's the one that I had the most experience with, for me... Um, I do think it's probably benefiting my hormones in some way and it's going to cause some disrupt before it balances. And so that's why I still feel um, that I want to take it about once a week. But I'm not willing to just cause havoc in order for it to balance because it was very uncomfortable uh, emotionally. So I would say either go, I go with your gut feeling, go, take it to a doctor, ask them, but just do what works for you and that might be once a week and it might not be at all so i know some people um like citrus oils help them fall asleep i i get restless if i have a citrus at night oil i'll get restless and i'll, I'll have a hard time sleeping so but other people are like oh i can't can't sleep without my wild orange i'm like so our bodies are just different it's not that it's bad okay another one said it increases their hot flashes when they take it i had another question um so let's talk about that. So serotonin is actually involved. Um, so I'll read what I wrote here. But estrogen affects serotonin metabolism through its direct effects of a serotonin neurons. So norepinephrine also plays a role in balancing hot flashes. So if, just like I talked about the Yara Palm, if you're taking this and it's causing, you know, a little bit of chaos, maybe just pull back and do one a week. Or something like that. I had to do that with the Yarrow Palm, even though I know it's probably regulating. So it might be beneficial, but I don't. I don't think it's okay. Just the same response I'm going to say to cause havoc and live in a miserable state while your body's trying to regulate. So just be gentle. Be gentle on your body. Another question was about, about maltodextrin in it. So that's a polysaccharide. It's used to preserve in the capsule. It's produced from vegetable starch. And it's easily digested, and it's safe to consume at very small amounts, which is what this is. So it's nothing to get stressed about unless you have, personally, something you know, body-wise with maltodextrin. 
another person said it raised their blood pressure. And again, that might be because of just causing some disrupt with the norepinephrine and which will raise blood pressure. And um, same, same answer, just go calm, um, gentle about it, or use a different oil is what I suggest. And I have a, I wrote down here, actually GABA will help decrease blood pressure, but if it inhibits or interferes your norepinephrine, um, from maintaining a normal blood pressure, then it may be just too much GABA. So I had another participant in my study who um, had the oil that we used actually increased her blood pressure, but she was enjoying the other benefits of the oil. So she said she just kept using the oil and about, ah, it's about four days in of using the oil that her blood pressure stopped increasing when she used it. It, it normal, regulated for her and normalized. So that's why... Do I have all the answers? Heavens no, I don't. But what I just say is your gut feelings, number one, talk to a medical provider. And the second thing is just be gentle. Be gentle on your body. Be gentle at the amounts you're giving it. And just know that um, if it's something like she muscled through it, like through the few days of it, because it wasn't that bad. It wasn't like medically bad. Um, and then it went away for her. So really, really cool. So I'm going to look at some of your questions, but for those of you, thanks for jumping on. This was a little bit longer, a 30-minute um, brain talk that I wanted to do on a really important subject of adaptive. And again, you can share this and, and let me know any questions you have. So I love, let's see, I'm just looking for any questions if you're going to stay on with me for a minute because I think those are really helpful. Is it for continual use or fill, use it as needed? I think it's an as needed. Unless you have, so when I'm, that's a good question, Teresa. When I'm working on like, so when I first got involved with doTERRA, I was digestive issues is what I wanted to work on. And so I was using digestin and peppermint, like all these oils and lemon very regularly for six months. And then it regulated. I actually only have to use those as needed now. And so it's perfect. So I think it's an as needed unless you're like, okay, I'm really tackling. I have, you know, fatigued adrenals. I want to tackle this. If you have fatigued adrenals, also add black spruce, by the way. But anyway, if you have, that's what you want to tackle for, you know, four months or try it for two months, do a regimen of it for two months, be regular. And then after that, see how you're doing. And maybe you just use it as needed. Okay, adaptive capsule with children. Is it okay for an 11 year old to take daily? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know if they have an age on here. Um, if your 11 year old can swallow a capsule, I don't know. I mean, if it were me, I could just tell you what if it were me, but I can't really prescribe what I could say for you. But if it were me and my 11 year old seemed to um, I would start with the oil. They seemed to tolerate, and the oil was helping them. And then I would try the adaptive once a day and wait three days till you did another one and see how they do, see how they feel, and just kind of slowly introduce it to such a small body. But one a day would be probably plenty. That's what I would do if it were me. So um, base your, you know, kind of decision off of that, I think. Okay. So Stephanie asks, when would you recommend taking the capsule evening or morning? So I would recommend taking it at the time where your stress and anxious emotions are most triggered. So if if morning time is like when you're the busiest and you have the most, you know, anxious is triggered, for me, when I, especially before I was able to retire myself from my job, I would get really anxious in the mornings trying to get to my job and had a lot, so much to do. That's when I would take it. It's also very good for calming at night. So if you feel like it would be helpful for sleep, I know a lot of people have gotten a lot of great benefits from sleep from it. So you could do one in the morning, one at night. So, okay. Let's see what else we have. These are good questions. Yep, Jennifer says she uses it at night and it helps quiet your brain. That's great advice. Okay. All right, I think, I don't know, I'm, there's a lot of, I, I'm trying to read through them real quick, you guys. You guys are so helpful. I love that you're talking with each other and answering questions for each other. Okay, so I think, I'm trying to find one more, but I can't, it's hard to read them when I'm trying really fast. Um, so I think we're good, you guys. I think I answered, but I'm sorry if I skipped over. I was trying to be quick, and I don't know if I skipped over. 
but I think we're good. So any other questions, go ahead and feel free to type in and as I can come back to them because I'm heavily working on my doctorate right now. I've, I'm finishing working on chapter five and finishing that. It's the last chapter. Kind of cool. And then I get my oral defense. So get to do that in January. Well, you guys, thanks so much. Great being on with you and so good to be connected with you. We'll see you again soon. Okay. Bye-bye.